Hi there, I'm Dr. Ingrid Clayton. I'm a clinical psychologist, a trauma therapist, and a trauma survivor. And I was having a conversation with someone this week. It felt important, so I wanted to share some of it with you. For those of us that grew up in environments where there was just dysfunction, and that can look different for different people. Um, it could be neglect, it could be active addiction, it could be lying, it could be manipulation, narcissistic abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. We have learned how to tolerate those types of environments because we had to to survive. And again, that looks different for different people. We tend towards different trauma responses, but in the big picture, our bodies learned how to cope and survive in those environments. It's been normalized in a way in our bodies. Maybe not to our minds. Our minds might be saying, that is not normal. This is not healthy. I do not want to live this way. But our bodies still had to cope. And so that coping gets imprinted in our systems, in our nervous system. So later in life as adults, we can be in relationship. And here's the thing. We can confuse what might be healthy compromise. You know, no relationship is perfect. You always got to give a little to get a little. We can confuse these things that people talk about in healthy relationships for the things that we grew up with. Manipulation, lying, neglect, abuse. So I want to make something clear. I am someone who reenacted her childhood trauma for decades. I was in many different relationships, romantic, friendship, mentorships, uh, that reenacted my childhood trauma over and over and over. And I kept saying, why is this happening? Why can't I have a healthy relationship? And then, after enough time, enough healing, healing isn't linear, but I cobbled together enough healthy boundaries and self-esteem. I walked away from stuff that wasn't working to where I finally found my now husband. We've been together almost 10 years. And in that 10 years, here's the deal. This feels really important. Not one time, okay, in almost 10 years, have I felt manipulated, disrespected, disregarded, never been lied to. I have only felt respect, communication, honoring of one another. This is not to say that I have a perfect relationship. Nobody does, okay? We have, we have our issues. We have different personalities. I'm very verbal. He is not. I am go, go, go. I'm a flight response and he's much more internal, slow going, methodical. So we have our stuff, but I've never been disrespected. I've never felt disrespected. I've never felt like we weren't in the big picture on the same page. So there's a difference. And for those of us that don't know the difference, of course we don't know the difference. We just think healthy compromise means you got to take the shit. So I want to let people know that there's a difference between healthy compromise around, you know what? We have a cat. I'm not an animal person, I'm not a cat person. My husband had a cat. That's a healthy compromise. That's like, you know what? Am I gonna draw a line and say, I don't wanna be with this man because he comes with a cat? No, I'm gonna figure out how to learn with the cat. That's different from going, wow, I really, um, I'm sober and I can't really live with someone who's actively using drugs or alcohol in an in a alcoholic or addictive way in my house. But healthy compromise means no, go ahead, keep using, keep using to your detriment. Uh, it's okay for me just to suck that up. Oh, you're lying to me. You're not contributing to our relationship. Uh, I, you know, no big deal. I can suck that up. There's a distinction and it's going to be different for everyone, but I'm just wanting to plant the seed. Those of us who grew up in those environments are going to be more comfortable because we're so familiar. We're so accustomed to sucking up all of it that learning where that healthy needle is on that spectrum is a process. And I want you to be curious about it. I want you to look to relationships that you admire and be curious about them. Hmm, I wonder where the line is for them. 
what feels like healthy compromise and what feels like utter self-abandonment. Even if you look at it in the movies, you know, TV shows, like, hmm, interesting. Where are they willing to say, I'm going to meet you in the middle and this still feels good? And where do you see someone just where you're going, get out? <laughs> you know, we can tell sometimes in other relationships better than we can tell in our own, but we can mine that experience and internalize it for ourselves. All right, so that's all I've got for today. I'm Ingrid Clayton. I'm a psychologist, trauma therapist, and trauma survivor talking about what it was personally like growing up in narcissistic abuse, how it led to complex trauma, how I've lived with that my whole life, and how I cope with it and move through it and heal from it now. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.